G'day guys, welcome back. I am going to do a multiple jiggle pour today. Uh, hopefully you guys have seen me do these. Oh, I don't know if it's going to fit. I don't know that it's going to fit through here because it's a long one. This is a 30 centimetre by 90 centimetre, but this is a multiple ring pour. One, two, three, four, five rings. Um, and then I just tilt up and I tilt down and I get these, these lines with the rings and they look like timber. <clears throat> so I've done a few of those, but today I want to try a jiggle pour. So normally when you do your jiggle pour like this, up and down, you get your fingerlings on the sides there. So if I had to tip up and down, these sides would just stretch out, which I don't want. So I'm going to turn my cup and I'm going to jiggle this way, which means my fingerlings are going to be on this side and on this side. So when I stretch them out, hopefully, cross fingers, I'm going to get a good result. So that's what I'm doing today. Ratio, and I'm doing reds, nice hot colours, reds, yellow, oranges, and then I've got a black and white to throw in as well. Um, I'm using, for my pouring medium, because I want it nice and thick, because I want the fingerlings to stay in shape, I'm using 70% glue, 30% water. So they are nice and thick, I'll show you the consistency. <clears throat> You're better off having them on the thick side than the thin side if you want to do ring paws and jiggle paws. Look at that. See how thick that is? Sits on top. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's still there. So, yeah, nice and thick. That's how you want it. Um... Let me just make sure that we're still focusing. One time that I came up and focused <laughs> on something up here, it didn't change focus afterwards and then I had the whole thing out of focus. Actually, I don't need my gloves on just yet because I need to do something else. When you're doing this type of pour where you only want to go up and want to go down, I don't know yet if I want to go side to side, so I'm going to mask the edges um, and that will stop my paint from falling off the sides. So just get some masking tape. Whoops. And what you want to do is, I've shown you this before, is you just want to fold a third of it across like that. So that side's not sticky, but this side is sticky. And then that just goes, the sticky side obviously goes on the side of your canvas like that. See that? Makes that little wall. And then rub it in nice and tight. I'll do the other side real quick. Just to measure up how much you need. Fold it a third. You've got half of it that's not sticky and half of it that is. And then that sticky side goes on your side of the canvas. Rub it in. Make sure it's stuck really firmly. It just means that when you kind of do a circle, the paint doesn't, from the circle, doesn't fall off the edge you encourage it to go down. I am going to put down a black base coat first um, so that I've got kind of black between my my jiggle sections. That makes sense. So my black background is actually it's leftover paint from my uh, swipe workshop that I did on the weekend. So it is um, two parts pouring medium to one part paint and that's just my black mart paint the studio acrylic that's all that one is so that's two to one uh, these are one to one so there's quite a big difference there's my little 
tool. Let's just spread that out. I have got another cup, but I don't know if I'm going to need it. So I'll just spread this out first. I'm going to put the video on pause because you don't need to see me spread paint. I'll be right back. Righto, that's done. Covered it with black, as you can see. Now, we'll just move that out of the way because I've got my little paper cups here. I'm going to do five. And... That's, I'm going to layer them. I'm going to try and layer each one a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to try not to have my white next to this dark red. So my colours today, this one here is called Brilliant Red. It's the Montmart Studio. Some of them might say school, some of them might not say school like this. Um, it's just, I think some are just aimed at the schools. This one is crimson. Um, crimson, crimson. Which one's crimson? Oh, this one. I think that's crimson there. Um, and then the yellow is the lemon yellow. And this really dark red. Um, just get it off the shelf. It's actually called mauve. Don't know why, but it's mauve or mauve. It's not. It's like a really, really dark red. So I see mauve as like a light purpley tone. Righto, let's get started. So nice and thick. Um, I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to need, but I'm going to just start. So this one's going to have that orangey colour in the bottom. This one can have the red in the bottom. And then I think the middle... <clears throat> I want the middle to have the black in the bottom. Um, and then, yeah, you can have yellow. So they'll all have the same colours, but just in a different order. Okay? So it just means whatever goes in first is going to be your, your middle. So they'll all look a little bit different. All right, I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to do one cup at a time, otherwise I'm going to get confused. I like the yellow next to that bright dark red there. Don't really want to put the black and the white next to each other. So I'm going to do that. All right, you've had one layer. We'll move on to the next cup. We'll give them all one layer and then see what happens. Okay, let's do a little bit of white next to the black. I don't mind a little bit of grey. So, all right, so you've had your two layers. Um, now, the black with this orange is just divine. So let's do that. Try and mix up each cup just a little bit. You can have a little bit more black in you. Yes, you can. And the yellow with this dark red. I really like that. Um, when I did my little practice, I didn't like the black and the um, dark red next to each other. I was trying to work out which way to pour. Do I, do, I did like a, I tried a little ring pour and I tried um, a jiggle this way, tried a jiggle that way. Um, tilted different ways just to see you know what would happen so I had a little bit of a practice so I'll put this one down next and then I can put the the white and then you can have some yellow I'll just finish this cup and some more of that and a little bit of that hopefully I'm not putting too much in you and then you are done okay um, back to you 
hopefully I've got enough paint left over. I probably shouldn't have put so much in that end one. Probably need one layer and then half a half a layer, I think, is all that I'm going to have enough paint for. Just keep going. Feel free to fast forward if you don't want to watch. Now you've got pretty, you've got quite a lot in you. You haven't. Don't know why. You don't have very much in you. Let's put a little bit more in you. Um, a little bit of yellow. Just going to go and finish off every colour now. Oops, that's right. I didn't want to put you next to you, did I? No, I didn't. Oh, the white. I forgot the white. Okay, and put that on the black, and then a little bit of the yellow. There's not much yellow left. I'm going to be starting to scrape my cups. A little bit more of the orange, black. Okay, now this one is the one that's the most empty. So let's fill you up and then I think I've done okay. It's a bit confusing like when you're doing so many cups and you're doing different like layers. You know, you think, oh, you forget what you're up to. That's okay. As long as I'm keeping the white away from that dark red, uh, that's all that matters really. A little bit of the black. Finish off some of that yellow. I hope this is going to work. Because it's a lot of paint. We need a lot of time to mix up. And to set it up. Took a lot of time. Hopefully it's going to work. I don't like the black next to that dark pink, so we'll put a little bit of a, one of the other reds there. Mm, what have I got left? Put a little bit of that left. Actually, let's put a bit of black on you, just next to the white. As I said, I don't mind the little bit of grey that I, I get, and the colours are really quite thick, so I'm not expecting them to blend too much. Hope I haven't got too much paint here. We shall see, we shall see. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. There's a tiny little bit of paint left. But I don't want them all to have the same. Okay. Um, just move you down there, out of the way for a minute. Oh, that was a big job. Okay, <clears throat> so um, I'm just trying to work out... Oh, you're dropping my things. I'm just trying to work out where I'm going to put everything. So that's the center. So you can have one, two. Your end one has to be relatively close. You need to move over. <clears throat> Your end one has to be relatively close to the edge um, so that it spreads to touch the side there and then in the middle of those two. So that's about where I shall start my 
my little jiggles. Alrighty. <clears throat> this is exciting. Look at the cult state of my gloves. Oh my gosh. Right. <clears throat> now I'm not going to pinch the cup because I want quite wide jiggles. So normally I would pour this way, but I'm not going to. I'm going to pour this way. Um, but I'm going, to, I'm going to start in the middle. I find it's better starting in the middle. So I need to aim for that dot. That's going to be my centre. <clears throat> right, wish me luck, you guys. Nice and close to the surface. Because I want those beautiful fingerlings to stay in their shape. If you go up too high, they start to wiggle. And you don't get a really beautiful fold. So make sure you get your fold happening because the fold is what causes your fingerlings to emerge. So as you get closer to the bottom of your cup or emptying your cup, go slower. Keep going with your folds. And then when you're ready, just touch the lip of your cup with your finger like that <clears throat> to stop the, the paint from flowing out. Now you've got to be pretty quick. The next one I need to do on that dot, I know it's pushed over, but that's what they do. They push over. So you kind of need to push back. So you've got to get a little bit of a wriggle on with this. A wriggle on with the jiggle. It's trying to push back and gain some space. It should all sort itself out once I start tilting. How's it looking? I can't see. <laughs> I'm so excited to see this one finished. I really am. I just had it in my mind. I thought, oh, what if I did this? I think I dream pouring because I wake up and I think, oh, I've got to try this. Right, that's two down. Now I need to do this one here and push that one back a bit. So aim for my dot. He'll just get pushed over a little bit. bigger your jiggles are, as in the movement of your cup, the more sort of defined your fingerlings will be. And then hopefully we've got just enough room on the two outside areas there. You can support the cup if your arm's getting a little bit tired and support the cup with your other hand. Try and get that last little bit of paint out because it had the different colour in it. So in the bottom of each cup had a different colour and that's what's going to be your centre. So you really wanted to get that last little bit of colour out. Just so that each panel, so to speak, has a different centre colour. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> right. Now this one, aim for that little dot there as well. Hope I've made him close enough to the side. But you can see as a circle, this side here wants to run off. And you don't want it to run off, that's why that bit of masking tape is there to stop it from running away so that it kind of spreads and you have to have enough paint on the canvas um, so that when you start tilting that paint kind of makes it to the corners it might not make it all the way to the corner I may actually end up with black corners which I'm not worried about in the least 
I put down my black background so that I could have black corners and a little bit of black between each panel and that just makes all colours pop because I've got black in each cup as well. So getting down to my last little bit of paint, come on out you come, trying to keep the folds going, little jiggles, folding the paint on top of itself to keep those jiggles happening. Oh my getting a sore back from leaning over, righto last one, mm, this one's going up a bit, so stick to your little dot if you can, push that other paint over, make some room for your last one and hopefully they're not blending too much because they're nice thick paints. If I had to do this with my flip cup uh, ratios it would be too thin, the colours would blend, I would lose my definition of my fingerlings so it's really important to have it nice and thick. This one's pretty. I like this one. I don't know, some always look prettier than others. I think it's the colour combinations I put together. I'd have to go back and look at the video and see what how I layered this one. I just think it's looking pretty but who knows maybe they're all going to be pretty hey tip that cup up get that yellow out this I think, was this the one that had the yellow center must be because i'm getting yellow now just trying to get a little bit more of that yellow out and you can't scrape it out because it'll make mud so just be patient, let your colour come out, that's enough. My hand's starting to shake now, that was, that was full on you guys. Okay, stand up, stretch my back. <clears throat> Righto, so now, if you want to keep your lines between, you just tilt down, you tilt back, and hopefully these fingerlings will stretch out. So I'll do that, um, see what happens. And then if I want to, I can get a little bit of movement, but we shall see. I'm going to go this way first because I've got a lot of black here and not so much there. So I've got the most amount of paint on here now, so I'm going to go this way first. And just go straight down. And you can see how this is going, this is slower here and this is slower here. So I may end up with black corners. Now you can decide whether or not you want to you know, tilt a little bit because this is going to run off first and this is going to be slower. But if you do start tilting on an angle, you're going to lose your, your lines, your straight lines. But I don't know if that really matters. I might try it just so that I can get my corners. I don't think it'll matter too much. And then straight down what do we think <laughs> now straight try and go straight down um, again I'm going to zigzag a little bit just to get my corners you don't have to you can leave your corners black if you want to I think I'll probably have to leave a little bit of black on the corners because I don't want to lose too much of my pattern wow you guys look at that look at that it's so pretty all right so that was a lot of paint on there uh you know didn't i didn't stretch it out a lot because i wanted to keep the pattern of the fingerlings so what you do now is just peel your tape off it's a lot of white there hey some of it will fall off peel that down like that and the paint will just 
carefully. It'll take its time. It should all run down. If it doesn't, if you've missed some of your sides, just get some of your leftover black and, and just take that off. Might get a little bit of that white off though. So as you can see, I'm not worrying too much about keeping my straight lines. Peel this one off. Let that paint that's been pooling there flow down. Mm, I'm not going to... I don't want it to go too wobbly. You know, I like the, the lines in between. So if that doesn't all flow down, I will just touch it up. I've still got some of my black base paint left over. What do you think? Do you like it? Well, it sure is different, isn't it? So pretty, pretty, pretty. Now I'm just going to touch up that little corner there and that little corner there because it didn't quite make it over. So yeah, I don't mind having those little black corners. It doesn't bother me. There's a lot of black in the painting, so it kind of matches. Just put some black over there. And that black paint is just helping to pull all that other paint down. Okay. There we go. Take my gloves off. Cool. That was a mammoth effort. It's very fiery looking, isn't it? <laughs> I guess the only issue really was um, could have done better is the yellow next to the black. Now, we all know that yellow and black should not be put together. It gives that sort of a, like a, almost a greenish look. Um, but I think it just, you know, it adds to it. Every panel is a little bit different. Some have got more yellow, some have got more red. A couple there on the edges have got more white. Oh, my ladder's a bit creaky, isn't it? All right, let's take you down for a close-up. Oops, not focusing, there we go. You can see those gorgeous fingerlings there, how they've stayed in, in their shapes. may have had a little bit too much paint because I haven't been able to stretch them out very much. You can see the definition of them though, can't you? You can see how thick they were to stay in their beautiful shapes. Now this one in the middle, I'm glad it's in the middle. That had that black center. It's got the gorgeous, gorgeous fingerlings there. I actually might do one without the white. I don't know that the white really adds anything to the pore. You can see a little bit of the white through there, not on the tips of the yellow but a little bit in there but if you didn't know it was white you could possibly think that it was yellow so must remember not to really put the black next to the yellow it still looks really pretty there but it is giving just the slightest hint of of green and we'll go across to the last panel so this one had a lot more white when i when I was going to, well, before I started, I thought, okay, just put tiny little bits of layers of white in, Julie, not a lot. 
and then I forgot so it's got quite a lot of white over it there but that's okay look at these little points into the white oh that's what I was looking at when I was pouring and I thought oh that is just so pretty look at that look at those fingerlings so there we go oh, it's getting dark I think it might rain it is the wet season here in Queensland in Australia so we're getting a Gonna get a lot of rain in the next few months. So what do you think? Do you like it? Hope you do. It's just a little bit different, hey? Um, I'll go across to this table. These were my little experiments that I did first. So this one, um, that was a jiggle pour and I poured it up and down. But see how the fingerlings are on the, on the sides? So when I stretched it out, I was just stretching the fingerlings, making them longer. <laughs> this one, this one didn't really work at all. That was just a jiggle, a wandering jiggle. So didn't like that. Nothing was happening in the middle. Um, and then this one, what did I do with that one? Oh, that was a ring pour. I've started at the top. I just did two rings and then I stretched them straight down. So that one's really pretty too. I don't know whether that one, that was like my second choice. Then this was my little test of the same one that I just did for you. And I thought, oh yeah, that's really pretty. So that was my little test piece. So we got this. Rightio. Oh, I think I should leave it there. 31 minutes. Look at that. Just waffling on. But hopefully you guys have learnt something about ring pours or jiggle pours and how important it is to make your mix thick, thick, thick. All right, thank you. Love you all. Thanks for all your love and support. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little notification bell, hey? Make sure that your bell is actually on because, oh, I don't know, there was some kind of update last year and a lot of the bells aren't on anymore. Righto, I'll leave it at that. I'll see you real soon. I've got another idea that I want to try, so I'll see you for that. Okay, bye for now.